Welcome to Multiple Streams by Any Means, the podcast geared towards showing our people different ways to make money, while also highlighting the entrepreneurs, uh, content creators, and the business professionals that's out here making that money. So I'm your host, Bam, and today, man, we got uh, my brother, man, brother from another mother. Um, he's a reseller. You know, if you guys know me and what I do, I made my fortune selling products online on websites like Amazon and eBay. We got a... Uh, same dog different breed man we got my brother david man uh the owner of we flip phones llc and man we got my boy david man i'm blessed to be here I, i'm very very thankful for the opportunity that bam has presented to me as a reseller i've seen everything that he's done and is doing and even as a let's say earlier as i walked into the studio and i'm seeing the gift cards the setup i'm like man yeah. that's a different side of the resale business because yeah. once you get so in tuned on what you're doing you just get so in tuned on what you're doing that sometimes you be so focused that you don't see other opportunities or other lanes so i'm david allen with we buy iphones llc the we flip iphones i may have to take that one and put an llc around it <laughs> um so what we do is what i do i buy and i sell electronics uh no longer selling to the individuals more so selling to businesses and businesses around the world because the value of apple electronics they hold their value so you have people across the globe who are interested in buying apple electronics and because we have developed developed a relationship with them they reach out to me for the phones that i buy locally and i resell to them and again i'm still let's say maybe a barracuda in a big sea i got a lot more growing to do i ain't quite a, a whale yet like i ain't no guppy <laughs> but um, I'm getting there. Uh, let's let's go for it. Let's tell the people about um, a, another way that they can make money. Absolutely, man. So what we do is we sell products. Uh, resellers, we basically we purchase inventory for the sole purpose of flipping that inventory, man. And um, before we dive into that, man, um, where you, where you actually from? Um, one of the few. I'm gonna say one of the few who were born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. You ain't got, you got a lot of people who come, transplants, they ain't from here. They say sometimes they'd be like, man, uh, I live in Atlanta, but bump Atlanta, we don't like the traffic. I wanted a few. I, I take the good, the bad, the ugly. I take the braids with the hawks. I am a Atlanta native, uh, originally from Decatur. I went to school up north and just out of necessity, really just out of necessity is how I got into entrepreneurship. Mm out of necessity like you had no choice it was i could keep working for a job where they disrespected me uh, they ain't really like that i was smart they felt like i had a smart mouth they was so i could highlight an example it'd be times where at the job uh supervisor be like i know you make more than me off the clock but i make more than you on the clock and i'm looking at him sideways like but I make more than you. What are you saying? <laughs> I got more respect from the staff than you do, and you've been here longer than me. I've been here for a few months. It's just, I feel like doing, just treating people fairly, treating people fairly. And I think at that particular job, what blew up for me was we was working on a job site, and the job manager wanted me to park a mile away, walk a mile to get to the job site. And I just wasn't going for it. That was just a, I ain't having it. If y'all could park here, I could park here. So it was a whole little, um, let me say, scheme where somebody was selling passes to park in the close parking lot that's right adjacent to the work job site building. Mm. Old boy gave me one. I took it. And uh, the, let's say the manager, I guess he had a grudge against me. It was like, well, how are you parking here? I told you not to park it. You need to park at the mall. And again, I was like, man, I ain't going for it. He was like, you either going to tell me who gave you this pass or you're going to lose your job. And after that, I was like, Fuck this. Fuck you. I'm, I'm not going for it. <laughs> um, so he's like, you you can't be a part of the union. You're going to have to leave. You can't work for another electrical company. I was like, again, fuck this. Fuck you. I'm out. And ever since then, I've been keeping to the entrepreneur journey. So originally, I started just with selling cars, thinking that that's going to be my bread, my butter. I'm going to make a name for myself buying and selling cars. And that was a lesson. That was a huge life lesson. Um, it takes me way back to buying and selling lemons, thinking that it's gonna make it. That's gonna make me something that I'm gonna buy this car for eight hundred and sell it for fifteen hundred. Again, you know when you're making six hundred dollars 
every two weeks as an electrician, as an apprentice electrician, to make seven hundred dollars in a car flip is good. But again, when you're in that type of business, you don't understand that one, you don't sell cars every day. Mm. It, you got to wait to the customer who's interested. Then you got to go through different customers who may see the car, be interested, but they may not want it, or they want to haggle with you on the price. And it's just like the longer it takes for you to sell the cars, the more it depreciates, and the longer that it ties up your money. So after a few bad deals, I end up blowing up, blowing most of my business uh, capital, and I was just in a place where I'm, I'm stuck. I'm looking at myself like, okay, so Dave, what are you going to do now? Now that you're down to your last 200, well, how you going to figure this out? <laughs> what, what you going to do? And for, I think, years prior, even when I was an electrician, I was tinkering with fixing phones. I'm like, man, I could pay this $80 to get my phone fixed, or I could fix it for myself. And the first few phones that I did fix, I messed up. Messed up the circuit board, uh, short circuited some of the phones, messed up the calling. Like, people would call me, but they would never, they would never be able to call the they wouldn't hear me because again i'm a newbie to it you gotta crawl before you walk i didn't really know what i was doing back then and i was like okay well let's take the phone repair serious and you know in my head let me get some business cards let me go around telling people well this is what i'm doing now i no longer do the cards but if you need your phone repair phone repair phone repair i can help you out with the phone repair phone repair phone repair and all the way from 2016 to 18, I'm fixing phones on the side. And, you know, them sixes, them sevens, them eights, I'm doing good with them. People are coming in. I'm going to their house. I'm fixing their phone. But I really wasn't making no money doing it. Mm. Let's say a good day, I maybe made $200, mm-hmm. maybe $80 in profit after I factor paying for gas. After I factor paying for marketing, listing on Craigslist, then going uptown to pick up the parts because I would never keep parts on me. I would only get parts when the customer's like, hey, man, I got an iPhone 8. It needs to be repaired. I'm going to shoot up to Norcross, pick up the parts, and then come back to wherever they were. And these customers be anywhere from Clarkston, Austell, Douglasville. So I'm traveling all over. I'm spending most of my spending most of my day and spending most of my time trying to fix these phones. And I was like, it got to be something better. So... A mentor, he put me on to unlocking electronics, and for a while that was that took me from 200 to anywhere from 800 to 1,000 a day just unlocking phones. People would be like, "Man, I know you got. I'm with Metro. I'm with T-Mobile to build too high. I'm with Sprint. And this is before they merged. I'm with AT&T to build too high. Can you help me out? Put that unlock chip in. Change the ICC ID. Then after I change the ICC ID, that'll put them." to where they could use whatever company they want. It got so good with people at Metro PCS was calling me all the time for their customers who wanted to switch to the Metro PCS network. However, you know, sometimes good things don't always last. In the unlock server, it would be sporadic. Some some months it'd be up, some months it'd be down. So it's like I can't base my my living off of something that is seasonal, that's sporadic. And with recently, I think 2021, 2022, the unlock server officially went down and you couldn't unlock the newer phones. And it was just like, okay, what am I going to do? And then that pivoted me into the position where you're making more money just buying and selling electronics. Instead of talking about the unlock side and the repair side, but you just focus on just buying and selling electronics and build that. And ever since then, I turned a little hustle into a full fledged business where it's able to provide me a nice income. It's able to give me the luxury to purchase real estate, go on vacations, um, spoil, help my people out, and just do be able to actually be a benefit to my community. And mm. again, none of this, I wasn't able to do that when I was an electrician. I was penny pinching. I'm, you know, making do with what I can. Mm. You were like dad from good times, like just penny pension mm-hmm. nah bro you got a real crazy journey it's, it's remind me of my own journey man um uh, before we get into that a little more man um so all right so you were an apprentice electrician mm-hmm. you ever go to college i did go to college where you go um, oh brother yeah where'd you go i went to georgia this is back in the day so if you're an atlanta native you know georgia perimeter okay. was, yeah it was recently bought by 
Georgia State. So I was at Georgia State the same year that they did their merger, and I was able to get the Georgia State, not the Georgia the Perimeter Associates. And for a hot minute, I had worked at, you know, I ain't no shame in the game, worked at Walmart, and I'm doing night clerk, changing the scenery around, and I think I got put on at Home Depot. So I was there doing the same thing at Home Depot for a year. I finally got into – uh, I got into an accident, and I'm thinking I could finesse the system, get the workers' comp from Home Depot, and then work another job on the side. And the other job was working as an electrician, so I did that for every bit of a year as an electrician, doing in-shop, making all the gang boxes and the electrical wiring, and then they put me on the field. And, again, when you're in the field, you got to deal with different characters, um, different personalities. And, again, if you're in a conflicting environment you either gonna fold or you gonna um, you gonna boss up and I just happened to not be one of the people who was gonna allow you know the supervisors to demean me say any type of thing uh, so I start you know talking back saying how I feel where I met what's going on and you know it was one particular supervisor who was just like he ain't really care for it and I wasn't finna hold my tongue back for him and that put me in a position where them first, after leaving that particular space, to put me in a space where I had to figure it out. So I got into the cars, got into the, the phone repair, got into the phone unlocking. And as I look back, now that I'm in a high point, I'm like, man, thank God. Thank you. I, I make more in a day than sometimes I would make in a month as an electrician. Mm -hmm. But it, it, came with, it came with that tenacity. Like, it was mm -hmm. times, um, even in this business, you know, in business in general, you get the highs, you get the lows, and it's just like, man, do I really want to uh, go back to buying and selling electronics? Because I've been uh, shot going through this process. Uh, you know, Rob, I think twice. And, again, you can't let that damper your spirit. You can't, you can't let that stop you. You got to be – you got to be strong. If anybody who is watching this, I want you to take this as a testament. Like, you're going to go through some hardships, but you're stronger than anything, mm. whatever you may go through. And then you're going to come out that much better. Mm. Well, yeah, let that be a lesson learned. Anybody's working at Walmart or Home Depot, um, you know, don't let your current situation be your final destination. Amen. So, uh, I mean, I know you said you uh, went to a situation. You said you've been shot. Mm-hmm. Somebody shot you. Somebody tried to rob me. And, you know, was prior to the start of the interview, me and Bam were having a one-on-one. -on -one and we were just talking about, you know, a lot of folk nowadays, they can't fight. You know, Bam in the gym, he boxing, boxing. I'm in the gym, I'm boxing, boxing. I've been boxing for about, I'm going to say five years now. So I don't use that as uh, a way, to, I use it as a way to protect myself. Like, I know I'm good in most situations. Uh, this happened to be a Christmas night, like Christmas afternoon, like 12 o'clock in the day, broad daylight. Again, I meet thousands of customers. I'm thinking, I ain't thinking nothing of it. You know, I'm a cool guy, thinking everything is what it is. This ain't what it was, and this, you know, could have killed me. It put me in a situation where I'm meeting the person, we face-to-face, -face, um, and again, we have like a whole 20-minute conversation. I'm inspecting the device, looking at the ICCID, Checking if the condition, looking in the front, looking in the back, just I will let me let me get a gauge of the phone so I can know what I can give you. Hey man, you know this is a iPhone 11 Pro Max. If the going rate is sixty dollars, partner I can give you. You know if they gonna give you sixty, I give you eighty dollars. And again, I'm thinking I'm doing good business by the guy. I ain't had no change. I think at that that moment I only had hundreds on me. I go to the Dollar Tree, get change out. Get yeah, old boy his eighty dollars, thinking everything is good. Again, buy and sell thousands of phones, meet hundreds of people. I do good business by my people. Normally, they do good business by me. Now, this this one particular instance, um, I'm talking to the guy, and again, I should have known something was up. I kind of hit myself on the back of the head, like I should have known something was up, because he's like, "Hey, man, you want to come around the building? We could do business behind the building." I'm like, "Man, no hell, no. ain't no way I'm coming behind no building." And I guess he thought I'm supposed to be gullible, gullible, go behind the building and just uh, with him to buy the phone. Like, no, no, no. So, lo and behold, 
I pull out the eighty dollars. He started to give me the phone, but he reached for a gun. I'm like, bro, are you serious? And again, I ain't finna question him. I, I'm going off of what what his movements is. So again, I've been boxing for five years. I jab him in the mouth, hit him in the face, and I really start going like I'm furious. Like my rage is coming out, like beating him down. And he still had the gun in his hand, and I wasn't able to get the gun out of his hand. So it, it hit me in the chest, and it hit me in the chest. And I, again, that was a moment where I'm, I'm reaching for my gun, I'm trying to find it, and I happened to in that moment I happened to find my gun. But you know he running away, so I hit him. I think I hit him in the shoulder blade, but the person still got away, still got away, and. The only thing I could do is just come back to a place of reality of what's going on, thinking that, man, this is a dream. This got to be a dream. I, I can't be – I'm bleeding? Is it, this just got – this is a joke. Are you for real? And I see, like, blood, like, really coming, staying in my gray track suit. Um, I'm calling for help. And I can remember it clear as day. It was, a, it was a young joker. He come out the blue with, like, a comment. He's like, bro, you been shot? And then again, I'm 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 panicking, looking at him like, what does it look like? Of course, you. So I'm like, bro, instead of all that, just call the police, call the police, uh, call the ambulance. And then the ambulance finally come and uh, they transport me to Grady, and I was in Grady for every bit of 25 days. Like it had made the the news, people was concerned. Um. I remember my nephew, him calling and him saying, he's like, Uncle David, are you dead? And I'm in the hospital bed having to go just, you know, embrace everything, the reality. Like, why are you, I can't believe this. This, this is, this is, are you, is, is it really this? Am, am I going to wake up? Is this dream going to stop? Nah. Um, so... Fast forward, now go through recovery, get back better, and it put me in a, it puts me in a position of, well, what you gonna do? Do you wanna do real estate? Do you wanna do something else? And this really all I know. This is what I what I can feel <laughs> the last few years. So I was like, you know what? We gonna arm, we're gonna get security, we're gonna hire new people so that way, you know, as the head in charge, I'm not forward facing meeting the customers, but now I got uh, associates or employees meeting the customers just to better protect myself. And again, most customers, they're just in a place where they may need some cash. They may be behind on their rent. Like we, we can talk a little bit more in detail about the different scenarios of people who got old phones, new phones, people who maybe need money for their bills, car due, car note due, may need money for bun. I hear it all. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them folks where I understand. I don't judge. I'm just here to do good business, fair business by all of by by anybody. I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna do good business by. I'm trying to do try my best to do good business by you. However, in that situation, it was just one bad egg who spoiled it for the bunch. Yeah, no, I feel that. So anybody that's listening, in order to protect yourself if you do anything like flipping electronics or what have you. Um, nowadays it's a little different. You can actually do cashless. I know some people that are cashless. They only do cash app, Apple Pay, Zelle, things of that nature. Also, just make sure you meet in safe areas. Obviously, he was, but you know, safety first. You know, safety first. And uh, something similar kind of happened to me before. I didn't get shot or anything. What? So um, it's this dude. I met him through some people. You know, uh -huh. what I'm saying he kept he he'll come every few days for something for sale. A couple pair of shoes here, iPhone there, sister Samsung there. Um, and he sold me a couple of gift cards, okay, you know. Okay. So I remember it was one particular day he had like a belt gift card or something like that. That's what he said he had. And um and he was I let my guard down. It was like a week after my birthday. Somebody I know through other people and it's a little it's a little later. You, you know thinking, what I mean? You thinking everything is thinking everything cool. You finna be a regular sale. Yeah, so he uh so I actually let him in my car. Hmm. Just wasn't thinking. Um, and, um, I'm checking, I'm trying to check the balance of his gift card and say invalid. And I don't think his friends was in on it. So he was with like one or two other guys. He look over and say, Hey, bring me that, that, that bag. As soon as I turned over, he up the gun 
And uh, I got my my flight of fight flight response kicked in. Um, so I say, oh shit! So I don't, I ain't even push him. His 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 friend was like right here, and yeah. uh, I'm on I'm in my driver's seat. I say, oh shit! I pushed the car open. He flew back to the other car. I just like jumped out and rolled, and then I turned around. I ain't running anything. Uh, I was kind of confused, like yeah, bro, what are you trying to figure it out? What like, are you doing, yeah. dog? So now he in the car. But I got everything on me. I got my money in my pocket. I got my phone in my pocket. I got the car key on me. You can't do nothing. Well, it's still, it's still, all right. So this is what happened. He, uh, car still crunk up. So we on, we on flat shows. Me and Union City flat shows. He drive like a couple miles down the street in the neighborhood. Actually, the neighborhood that the rapper Gunner's from. Oh, man. And, um, he goes to the trap house. Like, I think he said I got a car for sale or something like that. Or I don't know what he was doing. But I just know that. He went inside his trap house. I don't know if he was trying to sell the car, just buy some drugs. Because he didn't have my money. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So he go inside. We come out. The car won't move. And it's like making a noise. Like, it make a noise for 30. Like, it might beep, 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 exactly. and stop. So I say, bro, what the, f you know, you what you doing, bro? You bringing something hot to a place that's hot, bro? So, you know, so I get a call, like, within two hours, like, man, come get your car back, bro. You know, and then it was people that kind of recognized the car from exactly. two miles down the damn street. It's a matte black charge uh, challenger. All right, come get your damn car, man. We sent him out of his way, man. Come get your shit. And, you know, that was my lesson learned, man. You know, just make sure I'm safety first and, you know, have cutoff times, you know, instead of meeting people in the wee hours, you know, have your Ooh. cutoff times. And, yeah, man, that is pretty much it, man. That's, um, a, that's, a, that's That right there is an interesting one because it position you in a place where, you want to develop, especially for me as a black man, it's like you want to develop trust, but you never know. My dad say, uh, niggas, knuckleheads, and nonsense is the quickest way to get into trouble. And it's just like, you you can't really tell, read a book by its cover, because you want to develop trust. You want to have relationships. You want to be like, well, let's run it up. But it's only a certain amount of people who you <laughs> can really run it up with, because it could be a ten or a $100,000 relationship, but you get people who will mess it up for a hundred dollars. That's what. That's a quick come up. Especially these kids these days, man. They just they just want the instant gratification, man. And it's like, yeah, man. Um. So, all right. So we're gonna talk about flipping electronics, man. So, so anybody that knows me, I call that street arbitrage when you buy from people locally and you flip it. You flip that item either online or whoever you know to a broker or what have you. So, um, so what are some marketing strategies you employ? We on the multiple screens by any means. I'm going to go ahead and divulge some of the industry secrets. Google my business. Google my business. Get you a Google my business, whether it be a uh, brick and mortar or whether it be you having a V, you using a virtual office space. Get you a Google my business. Get it set up and then start growing, selling it. Every customer that you get, have them to leave you a five star review. I'm going to we're going to go into detail with it. So had them leave you a five-star review and then over time you go from 10 to 20 to 30. Every person, every entrepreneur who tells me that they need help with their leads, I tell them, get you a Google My Business. It got to the point where I even, I'm even thinking about having a Google My Business agency just to help new entrepreneurs. So point one, you got a lot of, you know, skilled tradesmen. You know, them old folks, grandpa, them, they've been doing electrical, plumbing, uh, bricklaying for years. They got existing clientele. They popping, but they're not on Google My Business. And in comparison, you may have Joe Blow who knew to the business of plumbing, electrical, bricklaying, but he tech savvy. He, he's on social media. He's on Google My Business. So if you ain't there, ain't nobody going to know about you. Mm -hmm. If you're not on Google, nobody's going to come to you. If you're not having your listing um, looking like something that a person would want to patronage, nobody's going to come to you. So, yeah, Joe Blow may be a rookie he may not be good in comparison to the person who has 20 to 30 years of experience but the person who has 20 30 years of experience is not listed on google so if you're not listed on google how do you expect somebody to come how do you expect somebody to come to your store so i tell people in the beginning create you a google my business listing grow it scale it and every time that you get a customer have them leave you a five-star review that's how i've been able to get to 600 reviews to the point where now where People call me all the time, all the time. And I, I can highlight the difference. So last, let's say, September, 
my Google My Business went down. I tried to change the name from We Unlock iPhones because I got tired of people calling me. Hey, man, you got, can you unlock my iCloud? I found a phone. Um, I'm with AT&T, but I'm trying to go to Metro to build too high. And I was just like, hey, we need to do something different. We need to do something different. I did a name change, not knowing that this was going to throw up my whole fall and my whole summer. Did a name change from We Unlock iPhones to We Buy iPhones. Google suspended my account. And I went from 30 calls a day to like six calls a day. So I went from like 60,000 to let's say maybe a good 15 to 20K for between September, October, and November because my Google My Business, like for me, Google My Business is key. I don't do a lot of the advertising like other uh, brokers do in the industry. Like they may have Facebook ads, they may have all them Google ads. I have one organic listed. I do good, fair business, and I provide fair pricing, and my phone stay busy. Stay busy. People calling me all time of day. I'm like, hey, well, you give me the rundown. How, how did you get my information? Man, we seen you on Google. We see that you got five stars. You at 4.9. You got over 600 reviews. We want to do business with you. Can we sell you our phone? Yeah, sure. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's uh, one secret. That's dope. So I give you, because I've done a similar. I flip phones still from time to time. It's not my niche, eh? a niche. But um, now that's dope because, I mean, that's something I overlook. So my, uh, my business came from also like Craigslist and word of mouth and um, just really being vocal. So if, I, if I'm if i in customer service line at Kroger, I see a little dude trying to sell his phone to the machine. Um, the machine might only be offering him 30 bucks. I might offer him 40 bucks. Mm-hmm. Because I'm finna flip his phone for 120 bucks. You already know the business. He exactly. don't know. He, in this in this business, a lot of it is the relationships. Way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who, who you know? Um. Because you may have somebody somebody who got a 200 dollar phone that they trying to sell for 80 dollars, but you know somebody who can buy it from you for 100 dollars. So using what Bam's concept of street arbitrage, yeah, you get them 100 dollars. They thinking that they just came up because they was finna sell it for 80. Now you gave them an extra 20. Mm-hmm. And not knowing that you about to sell it in twenty minutes to another guy for a hundred dollars, exactly for two hundred dollars, yeah. walking away with a hundred dollars in profit. Exactly. So I would have a um, advertisement on Craigslist. I would go to the for uh, wanted by owner section, and I would say sell your iPhone uh, top dollar, and you know it'd be a hey, what's going on. We're looking for. These models of iPhones, and we're looking for iPhones and Samsung. Uh, we pay top dollars. Call now with a quote. Put your phone number. I give them my middle name, so that mm-hmm. when when I call me, I understand what they're calling for. Oh man, I like that. Yeah, they really say like Alex. That. Yeah, they say Alex. Really I know. Like that. That's good. Yeah, they say Bam. I know it's social media. They yeah. say Alex Craigslist, and um, yeah, people call as soon as they call. So so me particular, I sell to like you said, I sell to other people that sell phones. So. I use a website. So I'll give you guys an example. There's one called um, itsworthmore.com. Mm, itsworthmore.com. They buy electronics. You could be a laptop, phone. They're going to resell it, but at the same token, it's enough It's enough um, margin in there for you. So uh, just last So last time I actually did this physically, I'm in Kroger, literally, mm-hmm. dude trying to sell his phone for 30 I look on It's Worth More to see what they'll pay me in that condition. Exactly. They paying me 120 mm-hmm. I say, what's up, bro? I got 40 And, um... You know, and this history, you know, you send your phone to them and they send you, I want to say they send me the money via PayPal, but there are other ways. So, you know, so that's a quick gem right there, man. And um, just word of mouth, like after you do this for so long, uh, you know, people know that, you know, people know what you're in the market for and they know you're going to make it happen, you know. So, so that's how I do. But Google my business, that definitely sounds, it sounds good. very, very dope. It is. It is my structure, my key. It is <laughs> uh, my foundation. It, it is. It has gotten me from where I'm trying to figure out business, how I'm going to get leads, to I got too many leads, man. People are just mm-hmm. calling me all the time of the day. We've been on the phone. We've been on this interview for every bit of 20 minutes, and I've had four phone calls that I've had to either swipe off and mute, and mute or have my assistant to correspond with just because it's a lot of phone calls coming in with with this business the more you get your name out the better that you get you can start to get customers from different states customers mm-hmm. from different countries and they're like man we want to either we want to sell to you or we want to buy from you we like how you do business and again 
I pride myself on just doing good, fair business. I know I get customers from all socioeconomics, people coming around, they, hey, we really need some cash, or, oh, this is my iPhone 13, it's old, um, I no longer want it, I just wanted $100 for it, please. And in those situations, it's more like, ma'am, I know you want $100, but I'm gonna do fair business by you. It's a $600 phone, how about I give you $400? Really? Yeah, it's, it's, we we gonna do we gonna try our best to do good business. So the machine gonna offer you forty. How about I offer you fifty? Because I, I wanna I want you to keep coming back, and then I want you to tell I want you to tell your people about me. Um, every time I leave a customer, I have a transaction. I tell them like, hey, can you leave me a five star review? And then anytime that you got anything that you want to sell, tell let me know. Or if your people have something they want to sell, to let me let them know about me because i'm trying to be y'all favorite southern electronics broker i'm trying to be the top of mind like how you think uh a car wreck you may think of morgan and morgan uh, or you think of uh online sales amazon when well, y'all got some old used electronics especially mobile electronics i'm trying to position myself to be the go-to for mobile electronics and again there's so many electronics from the arbitrage industry you got medical equipment you have <laughs> yep. <laughs> commercial grade equipment selling for tens of thousands of dollars. And again, there's so much room in the elect again, that's why I say electronics, not just phone flipping business. You got gaming systems. Yep. You should you you even got tools. <laughs> you got tools, gaming systems, toys, baby toys, stuff, man. um, tablets computer like pe people call for different things and what helps what helps us out both of us is like having that niche you um you get those calls every day that volume you know so like and the quick turn like the guaranteed turnaround so um so you said you said uh we're gonna dive into this in one sec you said the business is right i said the business that right. helps with that turnaround me too so like so i flip a lot of gift cards and um i either do one or two things i either use those gift cards and dip into um, retail or online arbitrage where you go inside a store like uh, Belk and, you know, you look through that clearance aisle and, you you know, you buy some stuff from Belk, flip it on Amazon and eBay. So um, then I also have websites that will just buy directly from you, you know, depending on what type of inventory I have, especially like gift cards, electronics. And, you know, that guaranteed seller, I mean buyer, and that, you know, it just kind of helps with the consistency. And, you know, that's how you get paid. You know, a lot of industries you don't make a sale every day. And but doing this, you see two guys. And I've been doing this, so I've been doing similar stuff since '08. But things got real serious for me around like 2015, 2016. Those mm -hmm. were like my first six figure and profit years. So how long you been doing this again? Uh, making six figures, 2020. Mm. I think 2019. I was right at that 80k mark, and again. This is coming from a person who used to work at Home Depot, was an electrician. So it's just like to finally see 10K in my in my bank account, I'm like <laughs> texting my dad, "Hey, I finally hit the 10K mark. Like, I don't, I'm doing something right." Yeah. And you, as over time, you start to get better, better and better and better. Where you finally hit that, you look at your bank statements like, mm -hmm. "I made 150 thousand dollars. Right. Really? Wow." Right, the bank statements be crazy. What it be like? Well, that's what you gotta look at. Like, <laughs> I made six figures. I yeah. can't believe it. That, that that Russian dude I was doing business with when I first started. So when I first started buying and flipping gift cards. So what happened was for me, I had a buddy of mine that had one that he needed to sell, and um, we look on Craigslist. We find this dude here in Tucker, Georgia, mm -hmm. um, Russian dude. Um, shout out my brother Dimitri. And um, so we go to him, and he, I'm looking like he's the guy that that buys these. And he does it all the time. So I was like, man, you know, I can flip that. You know, my first time flipping, the, you know, a gift card was on eBay. So I started advertising, you know, doing my thing with the Craigslist and Street Arbitrage. And that's how that business came. Um, and I remember one time, so I used to sell, like, but before I started selling on eBay, if I got, like, a, a, lot, of, a, a lot of volume, like, more than I felt like I could spend in a day, mm -hmm. I would sell all of them to him, you know, just for a smaller percent, you know, that way I can keep it going instead of just like Turn putting up it up all there. your money in yeah. your inventory. Now you, yeah. in those situations where you inventory rich, but you liquid, mm -hmm. and you liquid kind of dry. So it's like, yeah, in this business of arbitrage, you can have a warehouse full of electronics, mm -hmm. um, or you can have a warehouse full of tools. And it's just like, 
man, I need to move this stuff because it's like mm-hmm. I'm down to my last 20K. Yeah. But I got 40K in electronics that need yeah. to be moved. So it's like your inventory rich. You you stockpile full of inventory, but. Cash poor. Mm-hmm. So I remember one time I was like, man, we been doing this for a couple months, bro. You know how much money been, pay, been passed between our hands? <laughs> he look at me and say, B, don't think about it, man. Don't think about it. Just keep hustling. I said, okay. And then I started looking at them bank statements like, oh, shit. <laughs> what I got myself into, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, okay, so so at first, so who was your end customer when you, like, originally? Um, originally, when I first started, it was, again, humble beginning. So I would take items, sell it on offer up, and mm-hmm. if I could buy it, sell it. Uh, make like forty to fifty dollars in profit. I'm thinking I'm doing something. I'm, you know, sell two phones a day. I feel like I'm, I'm making a little something, something. Mm-hmm. However, over time, I started to notice you get these phone shops, you get these different places who they would rather buy from you at a price. And then again, in my head, I'm like, why, why, why would I want to do that? Sell it to you for oh, 140 when I got somebody in offer up paying me 180. I'm taking a forty dollar loss, but. There's one person who can buy it for 140 doesn't mind buying 10 to 20 at a time. When, <laughs> yeah. when you don't offer up, you got to deal with the hagglers. You got to deal the with the hagglers, people. man. You got to deal with people who may not be interested, who may not hit you back. And then at the time, because when you buy and sell, especially when you're buying and selling in person, um, even coming from buying and selling cars, you get those situations where you tell the person, one 1500 firm, I want $1,500 for the car. That's firm, don't come here trying to haggle. They get there, same thing with the business of selling phones. I want $200 firm. They get there and it's like, but see, man, but see, man, I only got $1,200 for a car in that situation. I only got $130 and it's just like. Yeah, they playing, they yeah. playing, they playing off your emotional intelligence, bro, because you've been anticipating this. You probably set it up, probably waited a couple hours and they show up bullshitting. So it's like. If you you gotta just kind of take a, a breath and say, okay, well, fuck it, get out of my face. Either that, or unless you can take it, you know what I'm saying? Because um, there have been situations where I was flipping cars from public auctions, and it was cars I only made two, three hundred off of sometimes. But I keep it rolling just because I wanted to go flip another one. But yeah, because they plan like you know it's their game. You know it's like playing this game. You gotta you gotta pretend like you you need more than what. It's kind of yeah. crazy. You can't be upfront with people. If you want fifteen hundred, you gotta say eighteen five. Exactly. Seventeen five. Exactly. So it's like I'm when, trying to cut to the chase and give y'all the best price. Um, at a yeah, do bro. good business by you, but yeah. I tell you fifteen. Now you trying to tell me twelve? Yeah. So let me just tell you two thousand, so that way we can get the six. We can get the fifteen that I said that I want. But again. I'm real impatient. I'm like, let's cut to the chase. If I say 15, just give me 15. But a lot of people, they're trying to haggle with you. They uh, feel like it come with the business, and it's just like. They feel like you need them. Uh-huh. It's like, you need my money. But when you do business with other business, or you let's say in our situation, when you do business with buyers and sellers who are serious, it's like, man, I respect your time. I respect your business. If we say this price, this is the price. And I've had to cut off a lot of buyers who, at the time, they're trying to, they're trying to haggle with me. And I'm like, man. We, I sent you the price sheet beforehand. This is mm-hmm. the price. I don't mind you negotiating, but there's a difference between negotiating and haggling. You always haggling. You always trying to um, get 50 or $100 off each unit. So I'm supposed to lose $1,000 from the sale of all the units just because you trying to eat. It's like, in their case, maybe it's not meant for you. Maybe us, our having relationships <laughs> ain't meant to be. So it's, it's been yeah. a lot of people where I just had to, it cut off like I don't like how y'all do business. Yeah, nah, yeah, and like you say, negotiating. Like it's been times I send ten phones in, and they'll be like, "Well, deduction." This, yeah, this, this was you said this was this one was in good condition. We just had to market as fair condition, but that's that to me that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I sent this in. You didn't see exactly what I had until it was exactly. actually shipped. You just kind of going based off you know what criteria filters I use, and you know I can understand that, but the whole you know, you told them fifteen, but they they only showed up with eleven hundred. I mean, it's no, it's like. And then a, a lot of times when you deal with certain demographics, is they telling you the backstory. <laughs> it's like, man, I, I ain't hearing the backstory. You telling me you behind on rent. You telling that's me that's cool. Me too. 
<laughs> I'm behind like a motherfucker. I ain't paid. I ain't. I'm, I got an eviction letter on my door. I'm trying to get it, bro. I keep spending. I keep. I keep spending my rent money on iPhones and gift cards. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucked up. I messed up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a good one. Cause it'd be a situation where they tell you something crazy. Be like, man. I know we had this uh, deal for today, but man, I was at the strip club, man, and, and they're just the big booties. They had me throwing the money, and you looking at them like, and you want me to give you a discount? Yeah. You telling me you threw the money that you were supposed to spend for this deal at the strip club, and I'm supposed to, you know, give you a pass? It's like, no, nah, man, get out of do this. This how, this how they, especially young dudes, this is what they do. They spend all their money on money, rented cars, mm -hmm. rented hoes. Mm. And temporary clothes, mm. you know what I'm saying. Mm. But the people they doing business with, they want to undercut us. Yeah. It's like I'm the one. I'm your friend. You would not buy all this shit if it wasn't for me. Even it, without my money, you could have went to him and got the money. But we need, come on, bro. So we we need each other, bro. It's a fair ecosystem, bro. Like don't short me. Don't short me I'm and give to it all to the bitch that you renting mm. or the car that you renting mm. or the. You know what I'm saying? When I say rent, yeah, bro. Y'all passing. We all passing each other around. These young folks, whatever. So. Don't short me. I'm trying you, to work with I'm you. Try, I want to see you win. I, that's why I gave you this money. You know what I'm saying? You know, I try to give you the best price in town, but you know, man, you know. This is this is firsthand, again, to eBay, e-commerce, entrepreneurs just telling you, like, the good, the bad, the ugly, the yeah. headaches. And it's just like you have those situations where people will come at you with crazy numbers, with crazy experiences. And it's just like, man, I got to pay my bills. Man, I have to I have to um go through all of this and then y'all expect me to come and give you a level of professionalism when in the back of my head I wanna cut y'all out. Yeah. I really be like this close from just you telling me you short because you was at the strip club. Mm -hmm. You telling me you ain't got it. Well I can't give you all of the items. I can only give you what you can afford. Right. Um or even in the case of uh people be like, Man, you know, can you help me out? And I I, I believe I'm a firm believer in God. Praise God. I don't mind giving somebody a blessing. Like, hey, I, I understand, you know, you need some bond money. The phone may be worth $70. You only need $100 to cover bond. How about I give you the whole 100 Because in those situations, it'll come back tenfold. Mm -hmm. But, again, you have a lot of people where they feel like they deserve a blessing. I feel like everybody don't deserve a blessing. I, you bless my man. How about you help me out? What what's going on? What why do you need the money? Why do you feel like you deserve a blessing if you haven't if you're not in that situation? Right. Just cause, just cause of what? Uh, cause you gave him one, but you ain't him. Your situation different. You don't want to go to work is what you're saying. Yeah. You facts. feel like you entitled to what he got, and then I'd be like, um, a mixture of customers. So I had one customer yesterday in particular. He said, um, man, y'all cap. Because I told him, I, I ain't interested in buying a watch right now. Right now, I'm inventory inventory rich. I got a lot of inventory. I need to move. <laughs> I, I, I have no interest in buying used items that's going to sit. If it ain't going to move fast, I don't need it. Right. I don't need it in my warehouse. Man, you can't, You just said you was going to buy it. So it put me in a position where I just had to uh, correct him. It's like, you come into my business. You asking me to buy your electronics. You asking me for my money. When I say I'm ready to buy, I'm ready to buy. But right now, I said no. And, um, you know, trying to be professional in the manner that when I am ready to buy, if the item is still available, I'd be interested in buying. But right now, it's a no-go. Just give it some time. Or another situation, um, again, I got 600 five-star reviews, but I think I got five one-star reviews of mad customers because last week I had a customer. She uh, just getting heated. Keep calling my phone. Keep calling my phone. I call, She called me in the morning. I pick up in the morning. I talk to her. Hey, man, I'm trying to go through inventory. I'm trying to post some stuff. I got some serious business that I'm trying to handle. I will get back with you in a timely manner. Calling my phone five to six times an hour, every hour on the hour. And I'm like, ma'am, you don't call my phone 25 times. I really did want to buy your lock laptop to help you out. But at this point, I don't even want it. You have annoyed me. You have annoyed me after I told you I would call you back. Call me from a different phone number, and it's like, ma'am, I'm good. Got the same thing, same condition. It's like, anybody retarded? <laughs> <laughs> anybody crazy? <laughs> Man, uh, all right, so what is an electronics broker? How'd you get into it? Uh, electronics broker is anybody who brokers electronics, meaning anybody who's in the buying and selling and volume. 
not just phone flipping where you're flipping one phone to make uh you know a little profit i look at phone flipping more like a hustle the electronics broker is you serious about your business that's where the llc come in with the we buy iphones llc is i'm serious about the electronics broker and business i take this serious i'm all not i'm i'm making phone calls to big businesses i'm establishing i'm doing good business even though times where the customer may do bad business the customer may come they tell me it's an item is cracked it's a small crack and then the screen be completely shattered and mm-hmm. maintaining the level of professionalism and not getting in that case annoyed like man you you wasting my time you telling me it's one thing and then it's the next or you telling me it's locked and i'm asking you well what does it mean is it any issues oh man it's just iCloud lock. And for the people who are watching the video who may not know, iCloud lock is is like having a yeah. a seized engine where you can't you got yeah. you got a nice you got a brand new challenger, but you can't drive. <laughs> 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 yeah, you got a fourteen Pro Max, but the engine seized. It's iCloud lock. Mm-hmm. But I I can't do nothing with it but buy it for parts. What you want me to do? Yep. And again, maintaining that level of professionalism where hey, I can offer you parts prices and and and. From yourself, you know, you get a lot of, in this business, a lot of delusional customers who they feel like they want $1,000 for a $100 phone. It's like, right. I could be more realistic with you. I can give you 150 for a $100 phone, but I can't give you no $1,000 for no $100 phone. It just ain't yeah. worth it. But to answer, answer, answer your question, electronics broker, the way I see it is anybody in the buying and selling the electronics business who legitimized and who is serious about their business. Right. Whether that be local, national, or regional, because you get people who buying and selling from auctions in bulk. You get people buying and selling from individuals, um, big and small businesses who this is what they do. They're brokered to sell of electronics, and it's not just limited to phones, tablets. As we mentioned previous. Previously, you get those medical grade equipments. I know some Africans who they're buying X ray machines for mm-hmm. two hundred thousand, and then taking it overseas, setting it up, and then charging the overseas hospital four hundred and fifty thousand for mm-hmm. the X ray machine plus the setup. Yeah, I get a lot of businesses like either upgrading equipment or going out of business. They'll call me and sell me all their old computers and stuff like that. Um, I know you was talking about the condition. I remember one time this dude, man, my uh my buddy um aunt, mm-hmm. he uh fixes phones and he actually works at um he works with Dewberry at um levels levels ten yeah. iPhone repair out here in Atlanta. And man, he said one time he got real mad. He, he asked all his customers, he he made sure. So he said one time he get a phone and um they tell him they ain't really mention what was wrong with it, they just said it was water damage. He said he get looking at the phone and start seeing doo-doo balls and pee. Then he said they dropped it in the toilet. <laughs> he said they dropped the damn phone in the shitty, pissy toilet. Get it out. Try to rinse it off and go get him to fix it. He said he opened it like, oh, hell no. Hell no. He said he, he, said he fixed it. Body, he man, said he I called him. Yeah, he said he called him. Was like he either said he fixed it and charged him more. He told him to come get it. But either way, he wasn't happy. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't a happy camper. <laughs> it's just again, you get so many electronics when you get into that volume space. When you get into that volume space, that um, you come across those crazy uh, customers who have bad electronics or who have con- electronics with conditions. I've seen Xboxes, PS5s when I go up under. The console, they got a nest of roaches in it. It's like mm-hmm. covered in dead roaches. I'm like, they bro, playing this a game is with disgusting. You. <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't even want it. I, come, come on, man. Can you do twenty dollars? Man, you got a roach nest in here. Those those heroin addicts, <laughs> those white boys that come sell us shit. Uh-huh. Those, man, I got two at one one time. A little, you what? know, a lot of them white boys be heroin addicts, the ones that be selling shit. Mm-hmm. So one time, this dude called me for a gift card. Told me he had a TJ Maxx gift card. Okay. I meet him at uh, the Varsity. That was one of my spots. Um, so, you know, he wanted, especially he was goofy as hell. As mm-hmm. soon as I buy it, he bopped me. Bop means basically they'll, they'll. so the gift card normally comes with a pin yeah. scratched off. They'll, like, they had it on eBay. I don't know where he got it from, but you can buy those strips. So if you scratch it off real what? good, replace it. You got the card wow. number pinned. As soon as I buy it from you, you place an order. Boom. 
So I so I saw that one to the Russian dude. He looked at me and smiled and said, he got you, B. I said, what you wow. talking about? I said, he said, look at this. And he showed me and it was somebody used it. About a fucking week later, now the first time I met him, I was at Dillard's Atlantic Station. Second time, I get a, a call a week later. It wasn't the same number, but they had a, a TJ Maxx gift card. I go, it was around the Black Lives Matter time too. So it was like around 20. 2019, yeah. 2020. So I go inside a uh, varsity. I see the fucking white boy walk in the bathroom, like real, like he had him from something. And I'm with my boy too, one of my boys. So I say, that was that motherfucker that got me. So I go in the bathroom <laughs> and I say, uh, say, what's up, bro, with that gift card? He say, I just, I was talking. I ain't even act like I was talking to him. He looked and said, dude, dude, what? What are you talking about? about Ooh. And I was gonna, I was gonna go for his package, bro. But another white boy stepped in, was like, "Oh, what are you guys doing?" So we walk out. The white dude said, "They're assaulting me. They're assaulting me." And and fucking, they they didn't hem us up. They were just asking us what happened. But what saved us is white boy, duck. And you know, it was cool. It was like around some Black Lives Matter march. It was a march going on. Hell he knew yeah. he was in the wrong. Yeah, he knew yeah, he was he in knew, the wrong. In those situations, you you know you're in the wrong because in the Buying and selling phones, you get what's called blacklist. It means the company either reports the phone as lost or stolen, so it's not eligible for cellular reception. So if you got a phone, you pretty much got a real nice iPod or you got a, a mobile computer because you can't use the phone part of the phone. So a lot of times in, in this particular niche, you get people who they'll finance a phone, either brand new, use it, and then call you. They in a place where they, they, need, to, they need to sell the item. So they need to sell the item. They calling me, hey, David. We want to sell you this phone. We trying to we trying to uh, you know come up on some cash, and again I'm, I try to work with everybody is to the best of my ability. I buy their phone. Sometimes not even a day later, they uh, call they they phone company reported blacklist or they reported it stolen. Mm -hmm. They done got my money now. I'm pretty much out. So yeah. Those oh, okay. Um, for finance devices, I just buy them all as blacklisted devices because it's just like the few have messed it up for the many just that situation where they trying to sell me a device but the device that they trying to sell me they going blacklist yeah so now i can't I that's can't, a bop yeah they bopped you oh a situation of when i was selling one time to the public it was a it was a customer he wanted to buy an iphone and again when you're working for your dollar you treasure every dollar so i get where he coming from as i tell this story you get what you are um, trying to make, you're trying to get your device, ain't trying to spend too much. You're just trying to play it by ear. Mm -hmm. He comes to me. I sell him a phone. I've inspected the phone. I've checked the phone. I'm thinking everything is good. Somebody sold me the phone. I'm going to make a quick flip. I bought it from them for 100 I'm going to sell it to him for 180 Everything is good. Three months go by. He calling me. His mom calling me. Um, crying and upset that the phone that he had is blacklisted. And now, again, as a seller, when you're buying and selling, you got to take responsibility for things yeah. that's not e that you're not even responsible Fucking for. Responsible I'm for. just in the middle. I'm the middle, man. I'm getting the phone. I'm selling it to him. I guess the previous owner of the phone reported the phone is blacklisted. Now he coming at me. He trying to uh, square up. And I'm like, bro, I I'm going to beat your ass. But you, you, you really need to understand what, what you're doing. Like, I... I understand what you're trying to say, but you need to get it. I had no parts in this. I didn't go to the company. I ain't telling that the phone was blacklisted. The person who sold me the phone took my money, and I guess they blacklisted to get them a phone. So now I'm in a situation where yeah, I, should have um, new phone. I think old dude tried to set me up, and we in the Publix. His man pop out trying to sell me a phone, and then he pop out, and I'm just like, bro, I, I'll fight both of y'all. What you trying to say? What you trying to do? I don't want to. Again, I want you to understand that I, I ain't got no bad feelings. I ain't got no bad karma. I did not come in with the intent of doing bad business by you because you get people who it, just with anything money related, they come in with bad intent. Like we know we're going to set them up or we know uh, we're going to try to come up versus it just happened like that. I, I didn't want for it to happen like that. And again, when money tight, it's like it, it ain't nothing I can do. Yeah. All right, so before we – um. Before we wrap this up, man, um, how do you solicit companies and say I want to sell sell you electronics? Like, how do you go about that? Do they have popular companies that's already doing that or what have you? Um, right.
right now, what I'm doing is what's called cold calling. So I'm calling these bigger companies in the lost and found niche. So let's say your airports, your Hartsville Jacksons, your Delta Airlines, they get hundreds of thousands of customers on a monthly basis. And with the hundreds of thousands, you may get 10% who they lose their wallet, they lose their phone, they lose their tablet. You get people who've even lost golf clubs, prosthetic legs. And again, I ain't in the business of buying prosthetic legs. I don't know what to do with no prosthetic legs, but them lost and found items, I'm interested in buying. So what I do, I reach out to them, I present myself. Um, it's recently come to my attention that um, these companies will donate to you just yeah. to get rid of the item. So I recently yeah. set up a nonprofit and they donate me the lost and found electronics. And what I do is I broker the deal and recycle, recycle them. But to answer your question, I reach out to them. I let them know what we offer. Um, and then in this case, sometimes you got to be persistent. When I, I recently got the contract with Marta, man, I had to call them for three months back to back, back, <laughs> back to back to back to back. Um, after talking to the supervisor, she recently told me that she thought I was a, a scammer or a spammer talking about some we buy iPhones, and in her her mindset, she like, this is Marta Metro Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority. But this is a train. <laughs> we ain't got nothing to do with no phones. What you calling for? <laughs> and then again, just outside the box, bro. Smart. <laughs> Fuck you, smart. And then I finally get her on the phone call, and she's like, we got so much stuff. We want to give it to you. We want to give it to you. So in my case, it's like all of the. The big venues, the truest stadiums, the mm -hmm. um, the Mercedes Benz, reaching out to them and letting them know, hey, I know y'all got all these items, and I know y'all want to return it to the original owner, but for the ones that y'all can't return to the original owner, I'd be interested in taking them as a donation, or I'd be interested in buying. So, a lot of what I notice, a lot of you know newbies to the business, or business or anything, they get so caught up on social media, social media, and it's just like, nah, y'all got to work on. The business, reach out to yeah. the businesses, reach out to, the, let's say, for an example, you an exterminator or you a cleaner, reach mm -hmm. out to these hotels, these small mom and pops and tell them that you can offer their service. So now you're getting contract work. Um, what I noticed from researching businesses, the biggest people, the biggest businesses, the Coca-Colas, the Mars, the they have government contracts. They got businesses that are paying them repeat consistently and in volume repeat consistently and in volume so that way you have business consistently coming in and you're not having one-offs because it's a lot of flippers and the, the phone business would just stick the phone flipping they just got their one phone today because they're not consistent they don't have buyers to buy from them or they don't have sellers to sell to them they got a few phones that they're trying to sell individually it's like that's why they still stuck at the trying to make 2000 a month phase because they're not repeat, they're not consistent. In comparison to somebody like yourself, you got a system, you got a structure, you know. Yeah. Um, in this business arbitrage, you get to the golden spot where you have an item and it's already sold. It's already sold. You know what you finna sell it for. Gone before it dry. Oh man, that's the best. Mm -mm. That's the best. Them unlock and in the business of uh, phone flipping, the unlock, non-cracked items. Man. Crazy. Already so. So it's crazy. You said lost and found. So I do that a lot of times with um. So I got my friends over. They got a the shoe, the shoe doctor. It's like a cleaner. It's like a cleaner service for uh, for shoes, designer shoes, athletic shoes, and they got a couple like luxury handbag cleaners. And they so I solicit them the same way. I say, so what do you guys do with lost and found? They say Shh, nothing. Some people say sell it, but most people they just donate it. And they'll literally donate it to you. But if you, you can make it sweet by throwing them a couple of dollars, they'll love you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's something really similar. From the biggest takeaway is establish relationships. Relationships sometimes is worth more than money because you can make money from the relationships and do good business by your people. And, yeah, it may take you a year to two years to start develop to develop traction. But over time, you develop traction. You, you get those relationships. And people – Yeah will call you hey man i got a ten thousand dollar opportunity i know it fits i got some gift cards for you or hey man my um my mama done told me you the gift card man i just came up on um some gift cards because in the electronics brokerage industry i get people who tell me how they found they came up uh how ups or fedex sent them the wrong package um now 
now they got this laptop that they trying to get rid of and they looking for the best price. I hear, again, I hear it all. I hear all type of stories. And because I do good business, I get that referral. The mom of them who got a laptop from FedEx, so her son told her about me. Now she calling me. She's like, hey, Marquez told me that you buy laptops or you buy phones. Can you buy this from me? Of course, man. I'd be happy to do business with you. But mm. by doing good business, consistently developing these relationships is how you how I've been able to sustain. No, nah, likewise. All right, so final question, man. Give me what you got. Um, <clears throat> how can start if someone started off with two hundred bucks? What should they do? Couple steps, and what would be the secret sauce? You already kind of kind of explained it. But how could they go from 200 bucks to six figures in, let's just say, two, three years? I'm not going to say two, three years, but, you know, I don't want to put, time, a, time. Want to put a timeline on it. But I say I just want to get you to your first $10,000 in the electronics brokering business as somebody who's made six figures. The easiest thing to do, start with iPhone, the second to latest version. So not the 14, but start with iPhone 13, start with iPhone 12s, get you the ones that's cracked. That gives you wiggle room to either buy it for cheaper or to buy it outright. Get those same phones. And if you want to find you a repairman, somebody who can repair your phones with OEM parts, get those same phones, have them repair it, and either sell it outright to an end user or find you, uh, and this, this is the emphasis, find you a local buyer, somebody you can sell these phones to, and then sell to them repeatedly and over time you get better and better and better and that's just on the implementation side if you want to compound and you want people to start calling you get you a google my business get you a virtual office set up your google my business get that uh verification yeah you're gonna start with zero but everybody got to start with zero i had to start with zero and then over time people gonna start calling you and calling you and calling you so that way it come in like clockwork. It's come in like clockwork. So as you get the deal, you get the deals, you sell those deals, you make a profit. And even if you're making an extra $10, you're making the extra $50 for every 10 deals. That's $500 right there. I know so many people can, who can use an extra $500 because the money keep going. The money keep goes in, it comes right back out. When you have a local buyer, when you have a, individual it may be sporadic you may it may take you three days it may take you a week to sell the item but if you got a local buyer you call them up you tell them hey i got this it's already sold okay and i just touched on that um i touch on that pretty much he gave y'all the whole blueprint you know if you um if the word google my business scares you until you get comfortable and you establish that account craigslist promotion is also good mm -hmm. Another another gym is so another thing I've done or sometimes we still do, I would take a phone, so say for instance a crack phone, but it still cuts on. I might offer you the minimum for it, twenty, thirty bucks. But say that phone is worth two hundred and fifty bucks, um, without a crack screen. I go to my guy, build a, a relationship with the we we buy phone store, have them fixed for fifty bucks. Now you seventy bucks all in, you can flip that phone for two fifty. So that's another uh tip and um all right, man, anything out there you want the people to, um, to know or, for one, tell them how to find you. And, you know, if you got any last-minute message, we can um, wrap it up like that. You can reach out to me on all social media platforms at We Buy iPhones LLC on TikTok. I'm growing the TikTok page on Instagram. I have about 16,000 followers, and you can follow me. You can reach out to me. I want to say on Twitter as well. And I'm just highlighting and showcasing the real world journey of somebody who's making something out of nothing. I done got past the nothing phase where I have a little something, something. So now I'm trying to mm -hmm. make something big out of a little something. And y'all can follow me. Y'all can learn because there's so much room in this industry. There's so many ways to make money that the average person don't know about you. You ain't got to just cut hair. You ain't got to cut grass. You ain't got to. Um, there's so many ways, legal ways to make money. And I'm just showcasing the people how y'all can do the same thing okay all right and um i don't think i can say it's consistency is key stack and repeat you know so it's been another episode of multiple streams by any means i uh, had a great episode with my, with my brother david 
We buy our phones, LLC. And remember, good things go to those that hustle. Man, I like that. Keep hustling. Don't stop. Be Keep consistent. hustling. Keep grinding. Whatever they said on Hustling Flow.